David Campo, Director of Band at Stephen F. Austin State University. And today I'm going to talk to you about breathing. The highest priority of any wind player is to play with a good characteristic sound. And to achieve this objective requires two elements, air and embouchure. While these two elements are equally important in the production of a good tone, the presentation that I'm going to give you today is going to only deal with the first part of the equation, which is air. Exercises are gonna be included to help facilitate good habits in breathing. Simply put, our lungs work by expanding downwards and pushing the dome-shaped diaphragm muscle that sits below our lungs down and creates a vacuum and our, and our lungs fill to capacity. The further the diaphragm can be lowered, the more air we can pull into our lungs. The problem is, is that you can't control your diaphragm muscle. It's an involuntary muscle. And so we have to set it up to be used in the most efficient way that it can naturally. So to that end, we're gonna talk about a couple of uh, elements of uh, good diaphragmatic breathing, and then I'll show you these exercises as we go. All right, our first exercise is gonna be a sipping exercise. What you're going to do is you're going to put one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. You're going to breathe in for four counts in rhythm, and then you're going to hold it for four counts, and then you're going to take four sips of air in rhythm, and you'll see when you get to the very top, that's the only time that the upper hand should be moving at all. Everything else should be moving from down here. So as you breathe in, we're going to go about this tempo. One, two, ready, breathe. And if you do that every day, you will improve your lung capacity, which increases your range of uh, phrasing. When you, are, when you have long phrases that go 16 counts, you'll be able to do those comfortably. So let me do that exercise for you one more time so that you can see it again. When you're breathing in, you wanna make sure that your shoulders stay nice and relaxed and sloped. There's no tension up here, all right? One hand here, one hand here. Here we go, one. Two, ready, breathe. All the while maintaining relaxed shoulders. Yeah. Good posture is essential to good breathing. If you don't allow the diaphragm its largest range of motion, it gets constricted and when it gets constricted, you can't breathe in a complete breath. And there are some great exercises to illustrate this. What you'll need is a chair, like this one. And here's how that exercise is gonna work. You're gonna breathe out, and as you breathe out, you're gonna bend over at the waist. Once you get fully exhaled and fully bent over, then you're gonna breathe in as deeply as you can. Hold your breath while you're bent over, and then sit up straight while holding your breath. And then breathe in more. What you'll find is that your lung capacity is greatly increased when you're sitting up as opposed to when you're bent over. And that's because when you're bent over, you're constricting the diaphragm. So the exercise goes like this. You're gonna breathe out and bend over at the waist. Breathe in. As you can see, when you sit up and breathe in, you have much more capacity than you did when you were bent over. And that's because of the constriction of the diaphragm. So good posture is critical to good breathing. All right, so the next exercise is gonna just continue what we did with the first exercise, showing you how a constricted diaphragm limits your air intake. What I want you to do is the same sort of thing. You're gonna breathe all of your air out and then you're gonna slouch in your chair like you do. And then you're gonna to try to breathe in as deeply as you can, hold your breath, then sit up straight and see how much more air you can get in. So the exercise will be like this. I'm gonna sit normally. I'm gonna exhale while I slouch. Breathe in. You can breathe in a lot more once you're in an upright position. 
Now, the other thing that you don't realize is that when you slouch like that, it also brings your diaphragm up so that even when you sit up, you're still pushed up. So when we talk about proper breathing, it's important to stay relaxed in the upper body and to use diaphragmatic breathing. We're gonna show you a couple of exercises to really help increase your lung capacity and to show you how diaphragmatic breathing works. Another exercise to show you about good posture and how it affects your breathing. Uh, if you put your hands above your head, and exhale all your air out, and then breathe in as deeply as you can, Hold your breath, move your arms down. You'll find out that you have a lot more lung capacity once your arms are down. So we're gonna start up here, reach up as high as you can. Exhale. You create a lot more lung capacity when your shoulders are down and relaxed. All right, so now we're gonna talk about a couple of exercises to increase your lung capacity. All right, the next exercise will also not only increase your lung capacity, but will show you what diaphragmatic breathing feels like. Uh, we're gonna start by lying down flat on our backs with our feet planted firmly on the ground. And then before we do this exercise, so that you can see what this feels like, one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, and as you breathe in, push your back into the floor. Don't arch your back up, make sure that you're pushing your back down into the floor. And to make this exercise more fun and beneficial, take a big book, a big boring book for this exercise. I'm using the Oxford Companion to Music, which is one of the biggest and most boring books you'll ever see. And I'm putting it on my belly like that. And I'm doing the same thing, putting a hand up here on my chest to keep my chest still. And I'm going to breathe in. Now I'm pushing my back into the floor and I'm, and I'm not thinking about consciously raising the book, the book but I'm letting diaphragmatic breathing do the work for me. The added weight on your, on your abdomen will work the muscles harder and muscles that work harder get stronger. Finally, the tone of the air going in is directly reflected in the sound going out. So when you inhale, you have to do so with speed and energy while staying relaxed. Natural tension created by diaphragmatic breathing is key to a good supported sound. Unnatural tension created by poor posture or activation of unnecessary muscles creates a bad sound. So in order to show you how we talk about breathing in with, with energy and speed, um, you make a go jacks like this, go jacks, right there, all right? And then you take the webbing right there between your thumb and your index finger and you put it on your chin like that. Now, when you breathe in like that, if you create a tall vowel sound like an O sound and you breathe in, you'll hear a very distinct rush of the air. The tone quality is very distinctive as the air rushes in. If you're not uh, tall enough or if you're moving the air in too slowly, you won't hear that sound. So that sound is key to getting the idea of fast air in with lots of energy and a tall vowel sound. So it goes like this, go Jax. One more. If you breathe too slow or you breathe with a flattened vowel sound, you won't hear that, that distinctive rush of air. That distinctive sound is created by the rush of air, this combination of tall vowel sound and, and speed and energy of air. I hope this is useful for you. It will increase your breathing. Better breath means better tone quality. Big muscles do much more work more efficiently than small muscles do. 
Thanks very much. And again, go Jack. And this is Maggie. We want to thank you for tuning in today to our little breathing uh, explanation and presentation. I'd also like to thank my camera person, my daughter, Mackenzie Campo, sophomore music education major at Stephen F. Austin State University. One more time, go Jacks. Yay, go Jacks.